we finally did it. It happened. We finally have a good video game movie. And it's not even based on a video game. Hey guys, it's G and Anthony from the F Word, and we just saw Ready, Ready Player, Player One last night. Last night, uh, yeah. So Ready Player One, for all of you who don't know, it's based on a book. I haven't read the book. I've not read the book. I want to kind of just go and see the movie first. Yeah, with no kind of biases to anything like that. So Ready Player One, virtual world created by a guy named Halliday. Um, big, huge nerd pop culture fan, and he creates this world a la Matrix. You put on your VR stuff and you're transported in. You can be anybody you want. And what he does is kind of a Willy Wonka thing where he's got an Easter egg where you can control the entire Oasis. And our main character, Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, he's one of the guys that truly understands Halliday and who he is. And he's got his crew. Um, he's got H. He meets another person named Artemis in there as well. And they're trying to find these keys to get this egg. One thing I want to say, this is a non-spoiler review, but I just want to say that like, there were some scenes where I myself didn't get just because I wasn't around for that era. Mm. But they're also like, it was a good mix of between like, you know, I know it's like Holiday was a big 1980 guy, I think, right? The 80s and 90s pop culture. Like there's a there's a heavy 80s influence in this, which was awesome. I love 80s music. There's, a lot, then, of, yeah. like, there's a lot of 80s, like, yeah. you know, video game characters, but there's lots of like recent, like there's Halo, there's Overwatch. There was, I, I know it's Battletoads, even though that is from the 80s and 90s, but... There was a lot of just, like, modern-day references and then, like, you know, just past references that any, if you would just watch at any yeah. age could get. Well, and that's the cool thing, too. Um, I, I loved so much of this movie for that fact that they were able to – and, you know, we said in the beginning it's like it is a video game movie because, really, this is virtual reality and of something that could potentially happen. Like, mm-hmm. this said in, like, 2045, you know, the world's kind of wherever. The only thing they're needing their human bodies for is to eat – sleep and uh, go to the bathroom and the big thing about this is that it's such a love letter to pop culture it's such a love letter to all things that we as kids loved that's the big thing and I think the the thing that took away from it the most is that there's passion in this art form there's passion in a lot of these pop culture references and no better than Mark Rylance who plays our um our creator he just loves this stuff. He loves, He's a, he was a socially awkward guy. He played video games all day on his Atari, reading comic books. And just the way that they constructed it, again, no knowledge of the book, but it just gave such love and passion to something that I love too. Another thing I want to note is just that watching this movie, like I found myself just constantly looking in the background, just looking for characters. All the time. Yeah. First 15 minutes you had... I think 12 Easter eggs, 15 Easter eggs yeah. or more. I wa- I know Mr. Sunday Movies is a guy who like does all these Easter eggs in like pop culture movies. So I wonder if he's going to do this one and how long it'll be. It'll probably be really long. And the cool thing is, is there is a nostalgia in here. There's references. There's everything like that. And I was worried, maybe you were worried too, that they were going to shove it down your throat. But I didn't get that. It was so organic to everything that was going on, and it made sense. It just felt like a video game lobby. Like, he, they're yeah. just walking in the lobby, and all these characters are there that you could just buy. Buy, you can use, you can meet up with. The battle scenes were really good. Yeah, the like, racing scene, that was like, oh. Crazy, hey? And then, like, just the way that they, they show you a lot of aspects of what's going on from, you know, the, the almost even introducing the mind of the creator to it. Uh, but again, at the very level, you also have this this story about Mark Rylance's character, Halliday, who created this and what he was ultimately trying to do, you know, creating this world that you can be anything you want. Just watching the world as it is now, where everyone's on their phones and getting into, now we're getting bigger into VR and everything like that. But still, there's that human aspect that you need, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Another thing about this movie, I won't spoil anything, but... As watching, it wasn't just a video game movie. Like, there were a lot of, like, life lessons that, like, you could apply mm-hmm. to, like, just, you know, like, even in this world. Because it was said, like, you know, people spend too much time on their phones. They spend too much time in the yeah. virtual world. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to go into more. I can't go into more because I don't want to accidentally. No, 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 totally. But but that's the thing. Again, you look at this thing on the face. On face value, it says kind of battle of good and evil constructed within this virtual reality. Uh, ben Mendelsohn plays our bad guy who kind of has, like, a minority report type of organization they almost like look the same and, and that could be another reference because in the book itself from what i understand there's a ton of spielberg references yeah. and spielberg directed this so it's it's funny messing around with your own material that is referenced in a book but even ben Mendelssohn, 
that was there representing the one side that kind of youth are fighting against where it's you don't always have to just completely grow out of things and Ben Mendelsohn's character was that representation of you just don't get what's happening here and, and the gravity of what's going on and what this means and what this meant to the creator and what it means to us. Do you have any negatives? I don't, honestly. Like, just, it's a 77% on Rotten Tomatoes, so there are some negatives out there, but... Like, I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie. This was my first yeah. time watching it, and we did watch it, like, pretty late at night, so I wasn't, you know, the most <laughs> eagle-eyed viewer. But it was, like, I, I'm i probably going to watch it again. Like, I didn't... I thought it was an enjoyable movie. Oh, man. I... I am almost at the point that so far this is probably my favorite movie that I've seen in 2018, for sure. It's still very early, but I think only Avengers Infinity War is going to bring me that much joy. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping, and probably Deadpool too. So there's something about this movie. There is that Spielberg magic that I think he's been missing for a while. Uh, the last films that Spielberg did, you know, didn't have that that magic, that E.T., that Jaws, that, you know, even Hook. I still, I'm a fan of, of Hook, and I, I know he, even Spielberg wasn't a huge fan of it, but there was a certain magic in there, and Spielberg was able to deliver on that. That's my biggest thing, is that Spielberg was able to deliver on that and bringing that magic. So it was really hard for me, especially in a first watch, to find some negatives. Uh, maybe towards the third act, did slow down a little bit more. There were some moments in there that, not necessarily unnecessary, however, again, it just it was more of a, a dragging thing and just letting itself get dragged on a little bit more. But I can't really find anything too glaring that really sticks out that I can even go against the movie. I don't know how it compares to the book, like the movie compares to the book. Yeah. But it just felt like some of the keys and like him fight figuring out how to get the keys felt a bit rushed. Like in some Oh parts. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like it's yeah, there that I can that I can kind of agree with. There was it's like a, there's a point where it build up a world where people have been looking for these keys, and then first Ku Klan gets it, and he gets it, which was great, but then the other one seemed the second one I think was the one almost the easiest. I, I honestly, I love the second one. That second one was awesome. And that's the other thing. They they didn't just use nostalgia for nostalgic's sake. Uh, that specific scene with the second key, the setting was in another reference. But that reference itself was so vital to that specific situation and that specific key. And those three keys that they're looking for to get this Easter egg really represented a lot. Uh, again, for me, the, the second one was more how quickly they figured it out. But... Even then, that, that whole sequence was just incredible. The third one was just that really big culmination. T.J. Miller was good in this. As uh, I did not watch a lot of trailers. I only watched the first one a yeah. while ago, so I had no idea all the characters were going to be in it. Yeah. So I, I found it funny just like listening to the voices and like figuring out who was who. Yeah. Um, like even um, Wade Watts is, you know, he's Parsifal, and, and his friend H is not who you think. And even H Evans is like... You know, you, you have a crush on this girl who could be a 300-pound guy named Chuck and stuff. And it really, it got it. For me, it really understood the thing about video games and virtual reality. And, you know, for a guy that played World of Warcraft, you play online a lot too. Mm -hmm. Not knowing who the other people are, but you still feel that, that type of connection. One thing I want to add for another negative is there's only one Nintendo reference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't as many. I, I was expecting a little bit more Nintendo, but they had a lot of Atari. They had a lot of. They had a lot more um, comic book, mm -hmm. and they had a lot more movie references in here than I than I got from video games. Um, they did obviously have the video game aspect to it, but uh, yeah, just it was a ride, and it was such a good ride, and it, it had so many references in there. Like you grew up in the eighties, you're gonna love it. Nineties, you're gonna love it. Two thousand, so on and so forth. It's got everything for everybody. And Spielberg just, yeah, he brought the magic. It's a fun movie. And that's just, it is that's it. so much fun. And it just, like I said, it just gets it. And it's heartwarming. So that's our quick non-spoiler review of Ready Player One. We might end up doing a spoiler review eventually. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments below <laughs> when you see it, what you thought of it. Do you agree with us? Do you disagree with and us? do you agree with the reviews online? Yeah, and the reviews online. Take a look at what's out there uh, and see. It's always good to disagree with people as long as you have a reason for it. Anyways, I'm G. I'm Anthony. You can find me on Twitter at the F words G. You can make sure you follow this guy on Instagram at Entertain Facts. Where are you uh, closing in on 60,000 right now? I don't know. Somewhere closer around yes, there? Close. S close to 60,000 on Instagram. So make sure you're getting in on in Entertain Facts on Instagram. You can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. And until next time, we are out.